I'm Marty Stauffer. All species of animals have feet which are uniquely adapted for survival. These appendages may be hoofed, clawed, padded, webbed, furred, or feathered, and they perform a variety of functions. In fact, some feet have noses. Because of their peculiarities, feet play a critical role in the balance between predator and prey. The superbly adapted mountain lion stalks silently on soft pads, while the bighorn sheep climbs on cloven hooves. As with all cats, a cougar's claws are retractable. This retains their razor sharpness. At the moment of contact, the cougar extends them to grasp its prey. The bighorn's feet have four parts, each consisting of two main hooves and two dew claws. The dew claws help to stabilize these mountain living sheep on steep, smooth rocks. As a prey species, They've developed excellent jumping skills and can scale rock walls over seven feet high. The primary prey of the mountain lion are deer, but cougars also hunt animals as small as rabbits and grouse or as nimble as the bighorn. bighorn remains alert while the cat silently steals away. Over millennia, feet have slowly undergone amazing adaptations. These changes have allowed each species of animal to survive in specific environments. The cloven hooves of the mountain goat are thick and broad with leathery soles. The two main toes are flexible and can be spread wide apart, helping the goat gain a grip on tiny footholds. The feet of the arboreal marten are tipped with five clawed toes. When walking, the claws are slightly raised off the ground to keep them sharp for climbing. Birds of prey, like the bald eagle, have powerful feet with four toes. Each toe has a strong talon for grasping prey and warding off competitors.
Because seals and sea lions spend much of their lives in water, their feet have developed into flippers. These California sea lions move awkwardly on land, but glide gracefully through the waters off our west coast. A familiar creature of freshwater ponds and streams is the crayfish. It resembles a miniature lobster with its large claws, called forceps, and its four pair of jointed walking legs. The forceps are weapons of both offense and defense, and also tools for seizing prey. Once caught, prey is transferred to the first two pair of legs, which end in pincher feet. These are used to pry open the mussel and transfer the food into the mouth of the crayfish. The crayfish is a crustacean, wearing its skeleton on the outside of its body, just like a suit of armor. A more primitive crustacean is the barnacle. In its larval stage, it floats free, but as an adult, it attaches to any solid object, including whales and ship hulls, where it grows hard, shell-like plates. When feeding, the barnacle opens its shell, feathery feet extend out and begin to sweep the water, filtering plankton to its mouth. The familiar sea star is a marvel of locomotion and design. It breathes and smells with its toes. And it can walk, even though it has no bones or true muscles. Water pressure propels hundreds of tiny tube feet that move in regular step-like motion. The tips of the feet form suction cups that grip any hard surface. At an all-out gallop, the sea star can move up to two feet per minute. Clams and mussels are its meal of choice. When attacked, a clam will literally clam up, or it may use its single large foot for defense. This bivalve appears to boot the sea star away. Another animal that not only smells, but also tastes with its feet, is the spider. Over 1,000 hairs are concentrated on its first pair of legs. These taste hairs allow the spider to sense certain smells. Besides smelling with its feet, this jumping spider has a glue pod between its feet that allows it to walk up any smooth surface. Like the spider, the butterfly has sense receptors on its feet also. If the forefeet find something tasty, the proboscis rolls out. Otherwise, the proboscis stays neatly rolled up under the butterfly's head. In birds of prey, feet are adapted for hunting. The large feet of excipitors are a major requirement for catching other birds in flight. One of the most dashing bird catchers is the merlin. Its long middle toes give its foot the wide grip needed to clasp a struggling quarry. Sharp talons then penetrate feathers and flesh. Rather than hovering or soaring to locate prey, the merlin prefers to sit inconspicuously in a tree. Although it may kill birds far larger than itself, most of its diet are birds the size of this blue jay or smaller.
The Merlin is an adept aerialist, even known to catch swift flyers like swallows. Yet, the Merlin's overall success rate is only about 5%. Another, much larger bird of prey gathers each autumn along the Chilkat River in Alaska. Bald eagles by the thousands line the riverbank, competing for a bit of beach from which to fish. Chum salmon, following a dim memory of home, have battled their way upstream to spawn in their native river. Now spent and dying, they offer themselves up to the eagles. On wings over seven feet wide, the eagles soar along the river. Fish is the most important food source for bald eagles and they battled for their share of the catch. These disputes are similar to the territorial clashes they engage in when establishing breeding boundaries. The bald eagle's bright yellow feet and strong talons, so effective in defense and food gathering, could not defend them against an invisible enemy. From post-World War II through the 1960s, a flood of pesticides, including DDT, contaminated the prey of not only eagles, but also hawks and falcons. Because bald eagles are at the top of a complex aquatic food chain, pesticides prove particularly devastating. Chemicals accumulated in lower life forms. The toxic effects were magnified when these animals were eaten by a series of successively larger predators. By the time the contaminated prey reached the eagles, it was the equivalent of poison bald eagles were in danger of extinction. Then in 1972, DDT was banned and bald eagle populations began to rebuild. Here on the Chilkat, the eagles seem to have developed a pecking order. Certain birds are continually challenged, while others are rarely disturbed.
bald eagles can be aggressive, not only among themselves, but toward other species as well. Osprey are frequently bullied into dropping their catch into the waiting talons of an eagle. Observers have seen eagles force a vulture to disgorge its meal. And they may even venture close to a grizzly to eat the remains of the bear's salmon. Though they do feast on carrion, they are also skillful hunters, plunging their outstretched talons into lakes and rivers to snatch up fish or ducks. They've even been observed catching geese in midair. The ritual of clasping talons appears carefully choreographed and benignly beautiful, yet the dance is serious. Failing to put up a defense can be fatal. Far to the south, along the coast of California, a conspicuous collection of flippered animals has assembled. California sea lions by the thousands haul out onto traditional beaches for pupping. These huge rookeries are actually a series of cow pup groups guarded by dominant bulls. Unlike seals, sea lions are comparatively agile on land and can gallop along with their front flippers slightly out of sync and their hind flippers operating as a single unit. The flippers are clawed and function as handy tools for grooming and dog-like scratching. Some scientists contend that seals and sea lions branched from the canine family tree 25 million years ago, adapting to a life in the sea. On land, they may move awkwardly. Once underwater, any hint of clumsiness disappears and the sea lions are transformed into graceful aquanauts, pirouetting athletically under the pounding California surf. Propelled by the simultaneous inward and outward strokes of their wing-like flippers, they can bank sharply their hind flippers functioning primarily as rudders. Nearby, a sea otter, the smallest marine mammal, searches for food. Large, fully webbed hind feet and a broad tail help it navigate through the kelp beds. The nimble front feet are a webbed pad. The digits apparently move inside the pad like fingers inside a mitten. Floating on the surface, buoyant as a cork, the otter uses a stone to hammer open a shellfish dinner. The Martin is a beautiful cat-sized member of the weasel family. In winter, 
it grows additional fur around its feet to insulate them against the bitter cold. The marten must hunt almost constantly and catch prey frequently because it carries no insulating layer of body fat. The marten is the most arboreal member of the weasel family. It can climb with all four feet and dart head first up or down a tree. So can the red squirrel. Both species have legs which can rotate 180 degrees and clawed feet which allow them to dangle precariously then plunge head first down the trunk of a tree. It was once believed that marten dined almost exclusively on squirrels. We now know that they prey mostly on voles and mice. To the south, winter grips the central Great Plains. The ring-necked pheasant spends its time foraging for seeds or quietly waiting out the cold. A hungry bobcat spots the colorful cock and closes in on padded feet. The bobcat is a solitary prowler, stalking its quarry to within pouncing distance. The claws of its round paws are drawn back into sheaths, protecting them from wear. Rabbits and hares are the bobcat's main source of food, but it preys on almost any bird, mammal, or reptile it can catch. This versatile little feline has even been known to capture bats roosting in caves. Once the heavy-bodied birds are launched, they have little to fear from the earthbound bobcat. Winter is loosening its grip on the eastern foothills of the Rockies. 
for a juvenile bobcat venturing out to test its hunting skills, the world is full of challenges and surprises. As a general rule, cats do not like water. They will search out natural bridges across rivers and streams. Even so, they can swim in an emergency. As the old saying goes, curiosity killed the cat. Well, this cat is still alive, but its pride must surely be smarty. The waterfowl weren't worried. They have webbed feet, propelling them from harm's way. Over time, natural selection has transformed feet into astonishing instruments of survival. Feet can grip, flip, propel, pry, and even taste. Centuries from now, humans may witness even stranger adaptations. Who knows? Anything's possible in a world where some feet have noses. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.